No, nope. it's gonna be 2019. Is psychological kind of domestic thriller type of a thing and type of a thing. Isn't that a nice category? Sharp object. Uh, sh and the vacuum's on. Um, I'll bore you. How about I not bore you? That would be nice. Why do I make the weird, weird, sad face at the end? Hi everyone, I'm Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Verse. Today's video is gonna be my top 10 books for 2018. And these books are the ones that really stood out from the group that I did read. And I will be honest, I did not have my best reading year in terms of numbers. I read tons of great books, so it wasn't that I was picking up bad books, but life just sort of kicked me sideways at one point this year and reading and writing and photography and basically all the creative avenues and things that I love to do just really had to take a back seat for a while. So my numbers are down, but I read some amazing books and I wanted to chat with you guys about them. So since I'm new to booktube, I have talked about a handful of these over the course of my November reads and my December wrap ups. So I will stay light on how much I chatterbox about those and I will just link the videos down below that I go kind of a deeper dive into those books and I will save my airtime to chat on about the ones that I haven't had a chance to discuss here yet. So that said, let's just get into it. Before we get into the books, I just wanted to mention that these are not being presented sort of in a forced rank order of I love this one the least to I love this one the most. I love them all. We're going to just talk about all the love around us and how great all 10 of these books are. So book number one is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. And I talked about this in my November wrap up, so I will include the link down below so you can hear me talk on and on and on about it. But Long story short, this was a reread for me. I wanted to read it before watching the HBO miniseries and I loved the book again. I loved the miniseries. Go watch it if you hadn't um, or haven't. And it's just, it's such a good book. It is dark and it is twisted and it is Gillian Flynn and all of her glory. So if you haven't checked this one out, check it out. If you want to hear more about it, click on the video down below and I will ramble for much longer. The next book is The Marriage Lie by Kimberly Bell. And this was the first book I read by Kimberly Bell and I loved it. I tore through this book. Um, I was actually reading it when I was commuting and I was on the train and the conductor was like, wow, that looks uplifting. <laughs> He was right, it's not. Um, this is sort of psychological, domestic, thriller-y uh, about Iris and Will, who are a married couple. They have just celebrated their seven year anniversary and Will is about to go on a business trip to Florida. And this is all on the back cover. So these, no, none of these are gonna be spoilers. None of the books I talk about will have spoilers today. Um, so a few hours later, Iris gets a phone call that her husband was killed on the plane crash to Seattle. And she's super confused because her husband wasn't going to Seattle, he was going to Florida. She's convinced there must, must be some sort of a mix up. And she sort of dives into what was happening. Why was he going to Seattle? Who is he is basically the question that looms over her. So her family rushes to her side, of course, and her and her brother kind of go down this investigative path to find out who was this man that she was married to? Did she know him at all? What was he up to? And hence the marriage lie, things start to unravel. And it's just, it's such a good book. It's such a fast pace. There's some twists and turns. I just thought it was so well done and I am hooked on Kimberly Bell and I am excited to read more from her. My next book is Final Girls by Riley Sager. And I talked about this a, bu a bunch in um, a book tag video that I fumbled my way through, but this is another thriller you're gonna see a theme here. And the final girls are the girls at the end of horror movie who survived the massacre. And in this book, there are three girls who in real life have survived some kind of a massacre and are dubbed the final girls. And something happens that brings them together and kind of forces them to confront what happened to each of them. And it's, it's twisted and it's messed up and what's happening and are they still really safe? And one of our girls kind of has blocked out the memory of that night, which can you blame her? 
And because of what happens in the present tense, she's sort of forced to confront what happens in the past. So you are shifting um, past and present viewpoints. You're starting to piece the, the story along with her as she's remembering things were being revealed or things are being revealed to us. It's just such a good book, such a clever premise. It's so well done. I had the absolute pleasure of seeing Riley Sager at Thriller Fest this year and I just was mesmerized when he was talking about this book. So I haven't read his newest one. I know it's, it's gotten mixed reviews compared to this, but I'm going to read it absolutely. I'm just kind of waiting to pick it up from the library. But I would read this one 100%. I'm back at 100%. It was just, it was just so well done. I mean, I think I could say that about all of these books, but such a good mystery. If you are a kind of horror film fan, there's great horror film-ish stuff in here. And it's just, it's great. It's just, it's absolutely great. So the next book on my list is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I'm being weirdly hesitant because this book is in the worst shape known to mankind. Like basically this isn't even attached. This is like all for show. I feel like I have like a bad prop book here. Um, this book has been through the ringer and it just, it really died a pretty quick death this time around. And I should just took myself up with a brand new copy of it, but I don't want to get rid of this one because I've had it since I was in college and I remember buying it and reading it back then. But anyway, it's such a good book. It's the only Donna Tart book I've read. And if you're looking to read or you're read Donna Tart or you're curious about this book, 100% I recommend getting it, reading it. Um, a friend of mine at work had read it earlier in the year, which is kind of what inspired me to reread it. And she and I are both big fans of How to Get Away with Murder, the TV show with Viola Davis. And she was like, the book is totally like How to Get Away with Murder. And she's right. So no spoilers happening here. But if you've watched that TV show, and then you read this, it's the same in the sense of you have this group of sort of privileged students, and this is in the small New England college, who are rich and kind of have everything sort of mapped out for them and have a lot of access to, to money and to power and all of these things, kind of like one group that works for Annalise. And then you have the outsider in the show, Wes, and you have the outsider in the book, Richard, and he just wants to fit in and be a part of this group. And the students in this book are part of this kind of unique curriculum that focuses on Greek studies and classics. And there's this professor who leads it and he only teaches those students and they're the only ones allowed in. It's all very kind of weird, but Richard finds his way into the group and into this crowd. And much like on the TV show, you find out kind of on page one of this book that one of the kids in this group, one of the students is murdered by the group and you find out who's dead. But in this book, which then shoots you right back to the beginning of time before any of this happens and leads you up to the murder, you're trying to find out who killed him and why. And it is a slow burn. I will admit the beginning of this book, you're really bogged down in the Greek and the classes that they're in and sort of this part of it. Power through, just trust me, power through this thing. And I mean, it's, it's huge. It's like 500, this is horrible. The last, last page is like freaking torn in half people. This is terrible. 503 pages, but stick with it. It's just, it's so well written. It's such an interesting story. It's so good. It is not the murder that happens and how to get away with murder. So like it's none of those things are happening in here, but sort of that parallel of the students, the outsider knowing out of the gate who is dead, but having no idea what led up to it or why it happens. And you're figuring that out along the way with them. So such a good book, such a good read, hugely recommend it. And I think I'm going to add to my goals for 2019 is to buy myself a new copy of this. The next book on my list is Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. And I just put up a video dedicated to this book. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in hearing more about it. Just watch that video. But in a nutshell, this is self-help, self-improvement, motivation, call it whatever you want. And it is set up with 20 lies that we tell ourselves or that we learn somewhere along the way. And Rachel Hollis debunks the lies and talks about you know, when she was buying into them, how she got through them, what helped her through it. And it is full of kind of like no nonsense, best friend encouragement. You've got this kind of mentality along the way. And it is everything from career to relationships to motherhood to like, you know, my house is never clean enough or I'll start tomorrow. And, you know, 
I need a hero and I will never get through this and I will never get past this, whether it is in her case, the death of her brother or, you know, any kind of loss or any kind of struggle. So it is really just, it's such a good book. It's so easy to read. She's a blogger um, amongst about 15 other things, but it's written in a very conversational style. And I talked about this in my review. I wound up doing the audiobook of this, even though I had purchased the book, but I had a hard time reading it, which sounds kind of silly um, because it is such an easy read, but I found listening to this in her voice and what I wound up doing is kind of following along in the book and I marked it up to the holy heavens, but it's really just such a great book. So if you're looking for some motivation and just sort of a kickstart to 2019, what a great way to do it with Rachel Hollis. My next book is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. And this is a book that I also talked about previously. So I'll link, um, this is in my November Rewind. And this is another thriller. This was the first book I read by Peter Swanson, but this book basically made me fall in love with him and pick up a whole bunch of other books that he wrote. So this is loosely based on Strangers on a Train and it is Strangers on a Plane. And our two folks, this is terrible, Ted and Lily, why don't I remember their names? Ted and Lily meet in the airport lounge in London waiting for their flight back to Boston. And the flight is delayed, they knock back a bunch of martinis and Ted kind of starts talking about his marriage and how his wife is cheating on him and he's obviously not thrilled about it and he's like Ugh, like I kind of wish she was dead and Lily's like you should kill her I'm gonna help you and that's where this book begins so this follows their journey through crazy drunk talk to what happens next and there are it's told from different perspectives it's such a good 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 ride I mean I cannot rave enough about this book. This is such a great book. It's clever, there's twists. Um, you're sort of horrified. You're kind of rooting for bad people. <laughs> it's just, it's so good. So if you haven't read Peter Swanson, read this. And if you have read him but haven't read this, read this. Okay, so this is super annoying and clearly I'm talking too much, but my camera turned off somewhere in the middle of me talking about All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth um, Clayfoth and I don't know where it turned off, so we're just gonna do it all over again. But I just finished this book in December as part of Cloak and Dagger Christmas, and I got it, I ordered it in November, it came beginning of December, I was absolutely obsessed with reading it, and I did, and it was so amazing. So straight up, if this is on your shelf collecting dust, read it. If you have any curiosity about it, go out and get it, because it's worth it. And if you've never heard of it before, listen to me talk about it, and then maybe you're gonna wanna get it. Um, I've actually already filmed a dedicated video just about this. I haven't put it up yet, but wait for it. It's coming. But that's how much I love this book. So this is a girl in boarding school. It is high school-ish, but it's not YA, so work with me here. So this is, was kind of pitched as like Gossip Girl meets Pretty Little Liars, and there's a secret society element which gave me Skulls vibes, which I talked about. And it's so much more than that, but kind of long story short, it follows our character, Charlie, and she's the daughter of a wealthy family, and she's in this prestigious boarding school up in New Hampshire. And 10 years ago, her mom disappeared in the night and it's kind of abandoned her dad and her and her younger sister. And she was seven at the time, so confused, but not kind of diving into it. And in the present day, her husband and his family seem to have moved on from this, kind of no questions asked. But her mom's family has not. And there was never a body found. There was never a note. There was no explanation. And there was um, kind of a little bit of evidence found that kind of led people to believe that she ran away. But no one's heard from her since. And in present day, her mom's brother has found some new evidence, which he brings to Charlie and is kind of begging for her help to find out what happened that night. And at 17, her curiosity is a little bit more piqued about what happened, and she's thinking a lot about her mom. And at the same time, she is pledging this secret society called the A's, which is, this is where kind of my skulls feels come in, where you have to do a whole bunch of like, basically heinous things to get into the secret society, which is being brought upon them by this semi heinous group of people who are supposed to be their friends, but they're hazing the hell out of them. So kind of, can you trust anybody here? 
And while she's doing things with this secret society and also trying to look into her mom's disappearance and her family's past, things are starting to pop up and she's starting to see some connections between things that happened a long time ago at school and things from her mom's past and things that, that kind of lead to her mother's disappearance. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. And then to add to that, you are reading this from varying viewpoints. You are reading it in present tense. You are flashing back like 10 years leading up to when her mom leaves. And then you are flashing kind of 10 years before that when her parents meet, sort of how her parents meet and wind up getting married and all of those pieces. So there's a lot happening here, but at the same time, everything connects beautifully. The story flows so well. Everything makes sense. There are twists and turns and what's happening next. And there's, you know, people you don't totally trust and people that you do trust and sweet, fabulous, lovely Charlie. She is just, she's a boss, man. She just, she is so great. I think she's just such a great character. She's so well developed. The story is beautiful. Um, it's, it's a mystery, it's a thriller. You know, yes, there are high school elements to it, but this is not a YA book. So if you're not a YA person, um, no fear. It's just, it is just such a great read. So absolutely pick this up and check back soon for my dedicated video, because believe it or not, I can talk a whole lot more about this. The next book on my list is The Wife by Ella Fair Burke. And this is her most recent novel. I had mentioned her briefly in another video and I'm actually gonna do a video dedicated just to her because I absolutely love her books. And this is more of a domestic thriller. She had started out writing sort of more kind of detective um, DA characters and more of a procedural in that sense. But this one focuses on Angela who is a mom of a young son and she's working out in the Hamptons as a caterer she grew up there, you know, she's living with her parents and, you know, living the single mom life. And, you know, every summer the Hamptons is flooded with lots of fabulous people and people with a lot of money and people from the city. And she winds up meeting Jason, yes, um, at one of the parties she's catering. And she very much thinks at the time, you know, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a fling and that's what happens between sort of the summers and the locals. But... It's not a fling, they wind up getting married and you know, here we are in the present day, kind of six or seven years later and they're living this fabulous life in the city and her husband is kind of a renowned econ professor. Yeah, he's an econ professor. He has his own business. He's written this best-selling book. He's made a lot of money. He has a lot of notoriety and life is seemingly great. And then he gets accused of sort of a sexual harassment, sexual assault um, by somebody in his world and their world starts to unravel. So this is very much about their marriage and, you know, did he or didn't he and standing by her man and not totally trusting her husband and looking out for her child. And then it also flashes backwards to when they met and to things from her past because there are some secrets there and there are some things that she hasn't been totally transparent about with him. So I'm not doing it justice. It's such a good book, it's such a good read. There's lots of great twists in here. It's funny, I was reading somebody's review of this on Goodreads recently and they were like, don't be you know, discouraged by the cover of it because it, it might look like, um, like a light kind of airy breezy book and it's not, it's just, there's some darkness to it. There's definitely some psychological thriller aspects to it. It's well-written, it's just, it's a very good story. So if you are curious about Ella Fair Burke, Burke um, I think any place is a good place to start, but having read the, this book this year, I really just loved it and I just love her writing and I'm excited. Um, she has a new book coming out in 2019. I'm excited to read, but this was not quite what I thought it was going to be in a good way and I love it when a book surprises me and this one did. Okay, so for second to last, and again, these are in no order of love. It's just the order I pulled them off the shelf, but it's You by Carolyn Kempness. And I waxed on about this one already too. So watch the November wrap up to hear me talk about this. Um, dark, twisted, Joe, 
Joe, who is just kind of like a stalker and a creeper and everything, everything. He just becomes obsessed with this girl, Bex, and inserts himself into her life. And this book will make you want to lock down any social media you have, if you haven't <laughs> already. It might even make you want to take it offline. Um, but this book is told from his perspective and, you know, how he falls for her and sort of investigates her and inserts himself into her life. And, you know, lots of people have said this and I totally agree. One of the creepiest parts of this book is you are reading it from his perspective. So actually there's like two creepinesses to it. So you're reading it from his perspective and he keeps saying you and you, which makes it feel like he's talking to you, the reader, which is creepy in and of itself. And then what makes me feel creepy is even though I know Joe is a horrible, horrible human being, there are times when I'm rooting for him and he is such a good character and he's so well developed and you, I hate to say you understand why he does what he does, but you kind of understand why he does what he does. You just have to read it. You absolutely have to read it. I haven't read the sequel to it yet, Hidden Bodies. I have it and it's probably going to be an early um, 2019 read for me. And then this was on Lifetime and it's now on Netflix and there's going to be a season two on Netflix. My advice will always be, even though I don't always follow it, read the book first. And there are differences between the book and the TV show. So I would read the book first. I think they did a good job with the TV show. Absolutely. But I think the book is way better. So read the book, then watch the show and have some fun with it. It's like an eight part or 10 part mini series. So they dive very deep into it. They just Hollywood it up a little bit, but read the book, read the book, super creepy, but kind of if creepy can be like in all the best ways, I would say this is creepy in all the best ways. And my last book for 2018 is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. Obviously I loved this book because it's on the list, but I just think this was such an amazing book. And I had the great pleasure of getting to see AJ Finn at a reading that he did and a QA. and a I got to meet him. It was a book signing. He signed my book. I love this stuff. I'm such a geek for it. Um, writers are my rock stars people. So this was a rock star experience for me. And I just thought this was such a great book. I, I devoured it. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Okay, so you've probably heard everything you want to hear about this book, but I'm just gonna tell you about it anyway, because that's presumably why you're here. So this book is Dr. Anna Fox. She is agoraphobic. She lives in her five-story townhouse in Harlem. She has a boarder who lives with her, who kind of helps her around the house. And she has someone who comes to visit her and she has some connections with an online community and she talks on the phone, but she can't cross her threshold without having a complete panic attack. So she's literally holed up in this house where she drinks way more wine than any human being should drink. And she pops way more pills than any human being should pop. And never mind that she's doing them all at the same time. So her life is just sort of a hazy old hot mess but she passes her days looking out the window and watching her neighbors. And I think whether you are living in the city or living in the suburbs at some point or another, you have looked out your window and watched your neighbors. And imagine your horror if one night you think you see something really sinister happen in one of your neighbor's windows. And you are so out of your gourd on pills and booze that did you see it? Did you dream it? Did you imagine it? Did it happen? What's going on? And Anna is trying to find out, you know, did something really happen here? Am I losing my mind? What on earth is going on? And this story is, you know, sort of her trying to figure out what it is she saw and if she saw what she thinks she saw. What, did she see what she thinks she saw? La, <laughs> I can't even say tongue twister without twisting. Um, and also, you know, gives you some backstory on how it is that she wound up agoraphobic and alone when she was, you know, kind of this very successful married um, mom and doctor. And, you know, how did she land in the situation that she's in? So it's funny. The reviews on this are so all over the board from people. And, you know, I think it was really well done. I think the twists were great. Yes, there are Hitchcock elements in it, and it's not like he's trying to pretend there aren't. And, you know, she's literally watching Hitchcock movies in the book. So it's all there. And it's just, it's such a well-crafted thriller. I think 
I just think it was so well done. And I think if you're a thriller reader, I think if you are a Hitchcock fan, pick it up, read it. It's, it's such a good book. It's a quick read. Go down the rabbit hole with Anna, trying to figure out what's happening alongside her. And um, just do it. Just take the ride. Take the ride because it's a good one. And they are, I don't know if they're done yet. They were filming this in New York. Um, so this is already being made into a movie with Amy Adams and I think Julianne Moore and a whole host of other people. So I'm super curious about that. But read the book, pick it up. So great. Such a great way for me to start 2018. This is one of the first books I read and I'm happy to be sitting here at the, t uh, da -da, sitting here at the end of 2018 still having it be one of my favorite books of the year. So that does it for my top 10 of 2018. Such a big fan of all of those books, obviously. I have linked the videos down below where I ramble on a bit more about some of them. And I would love to hear if you guys have read any of those books or what your favorite books of the year were, because obviously I, I always say this, I'm always looking for more books to read and more recommendations. So let me know. Thank you again for spending a part of your day here with me and I will see you back here soon. Bye everybody.